For the average uh, person, we saw successive generations of mobile technology. We saw the user experience evolve. Um, I remember the outrage when uh, telecom operators in India started <coughs> charging higher rates for festival time weekend SMSs. Uh, and uh, I don't know how many of you here uh, used a phone before calling party pays came into effect. Huh? Okay, so the missed call era, that was an Indian jugad. Huh? So, so just, just think of what we have done. And today, you have, uh, you have uh, WhatsApp actually fueling so much commerce that probably WhatsApp itself doesn't know how much of it is being done. So, but sticking to the 5G core, do you agree with uh, uh, what Manoj said that we really need to look at it from a more a B2B kind of approach? The layman... To understand that 5G may not immediately translate into some massive speed on his handset, but it is fixing so many other things, yeah. invisible things, with uh, his life and productivity. So actually, to, I mean, just keep it close. Yeah. Uh, if you see the, I mean, the guy introduction to the panel itself, the 5G, you know, people told that it is uh, enhanced mobile broadband, ultra reliability, low latencies, massive machine type of communications. I feel that uh, 5G with the enhanced mobile broadband which is we have seen, we, many people are experiencing right now, they are seeing the throughputs and the speeds etc. But what we, uh, what we envisage, I think the, I agree with the uh, people, the panel here that there are lot more services is going to be evolved. For that 5G will offer the spectral efficiency more number of sensors is going to be added and there is a study that there will be 30 billion connected devices by 2025. So all these will be connected through the internet through the 5G, right? So if you have to handle that kind of massive devices, the massive machine type of communication piece of the 5G has to be evolved, right? right? So currently what the majority of the deployment in the world is through this EMBB piece of that. So that is why there is a little bit of confusion among the industry and everyone that, hey, what is 5G is talking about many, many, many use cases, but what we are seeing end up is having is the only the throughput speeds. I'm, I'm right. glad that confusion is not the kind that existed in 2G, Col G. Thank God 5G is also not mentioned in the same thing. But so, you know, you, you, you had... A very a large company's uh, R&D, you're the CTO at Samsung and, you know, massive, massive brand in India and globally. I just want you to, for the general audience here, tell us one use case that you think of 5G, which is uniquely Indian. You know, like something like missed call, if not exactly <laughs> that. Uh, so I think uh, I will, uh, I agree with the fellow panelists actually. So if we see the... If you have to use the 5G, so far in 4G, I think the download, I think the YouTube download is introduced in India because we have the scale of the people and 4G connectivity is arrived there. I think that will convert into the streaming. The download uh, use case will convert into the streaming with the 5G because we have the huge bandwidth is available with the uh, larger throughputs. That directly the consumer use case. But like, uh, like I mentioned, this IoT sensors and IoT devices, etc., they, once they evolve, they will become like a more connected world and then they will give, realize the various vertical services that 5G is going to offer. That's a very good point, uh, what Mohan is saying. And I'm just kind of adding to that from downloading YouTube and trying to save bandwidth cost. And because you did not get uniform bandwidth everywhere, you downloaded it and kept it for watching later. What he is saying is live stream, which is you are consuming broadcast signal on the move. So that's a great thing. I'll come back to it and also to you, Harman Preet, later about whether how our networks are being optimized to handle that kind of shift in consumption. <laughs>